had one hell of a loony week last week with the world premiere of the first ever 2D animated theatrical feature film, The Day the Earth Blew Up, starring none other than Daffy Duck and Porky Pig at Annecy, which was in France. And Vincent Alexander drops in to discuss Warner Animation's influences in live action cinema. So, of course, you realize this means podcast.
me. That's not right. Cut. Cut. Have lunch, everybody.
Same. And I cannot believe what a outpouring of love the new movie has gotten from yeah. the people that saw it in uh, in France at the Annecy Festival, which is a celebration of animation in general. You had all the studios from Hollywood bring their newest animated projects to life over there for first time viewers. And one of them was none other than The Day the Earth Blew Up. This is a wholly original story directed by Pete Brownguard, who's the showrunner over at Looney Tunes Cartoons. And I am so, so dying to see this with an audience. I'm jealous of everyone that got to go to this. Uh, But the feedback has been phenomenal. You guys reported on it over at Cartoon Brew. Uh, Vincent, what was your takeaway as far as what people were coming out of the theater feeling like? Honestly, yeah, everything I heard about it was very positive. Uh, yeah, just people uh, really enthusiastic about what they saw. And and I haven't seen the feature yet, but from the clips that I've seen, um, yeah, it looks fantastic. Uh, really great, that kind of stretchy, um, you know, Bob Clampett, kind of Rod Scribner look to it. Um, yeah, and it's it's really um and given the Looney Tunes, you know, legacy, it's it's kind of incredible that there hasn't been a fully animated, uh, totally original uh, feature film that, that they've made yet. Um, I mean, they made all those uh, films in the 70s and 80s with clips from the old Looney Tunes cartoons. And obviously they've done live action animated combinations, but a fully animated Looney Tunes feature we haven't seen before. So, um, yeah, this looks like a, a great one, too. A 94-year franchise finally getting an animated movie. It's it's ridiculous to think about. But yeah, outside of those compilation movies, which had little bits of animation plugged in between shorts that had already been released, this is the first ever of its kind with these characters. And it's got Petunia Pig, it's got Porky Pig, and it's got Daffy Duck. And I cannot be more excited to hear the fervent nature of these reviews coming out of this they're saying that it is a looney tunes movie made for looney tunes fans i mean i'm here for that and they're saying that it is like balls to the wall like antics crazy jokes a lot of gag work i mean you're talking about rod scribner like he was the king of like those quick wacky antics that are that looney tunes are known for and if they're injecting that into this oh my gosh i cannot I cannot wait to see this with an audience. Sure. Uh, but, and it's refreshing to see any uh, hand-drawn animated feature at this point. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and and it looks and it's not just hand-drawn; it's really high-quality, really funny uh, hand-drawn animation, which is is great. It's something to celebrate. I know that there there's people that worked on the cartoon series, uh, which is on Max right now, over at Tonic DNA. Those those guys worked on this feature as well. And a big shout out to every 2d animator that that touched this project like kudos to you and thank you for your hard work and your endurance during all of this i know this was a long process uh pete Browngard was there and he got up on stage and talked about how long of a process this actually took them it was three years in the making and all of the work that goes that went into this really shows especially in that clip that they released online which is the only semblance of footage we have but yeah. I'm so excited about it because, I mean, Daffy's going through like several expressions just in that one little yeah. s- segment. It's just mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, animated shows, you know, they'll have a few crazy expressions and, and movements. But then, you know, this one just in that little clip is, is jam packed full of them. So uh, and yeah, it feels like a, just from what we've seen so far, it feels like a uh movie that's been written by cartoonists, you know, not just like a, a a regular screenplay that they've illustrated, but, you know, it has those those sight gags that that you expect to see from when you get a bunch of animators together and they all kind of draw out some funny ideas. Yeah, and it's got a cinematic nature to it, too. You have the overlay of the coloring and the lighting and everything just pops. Like, this is going to be a phenomenal experience. And because we're an animation podcast, I really urge everyone listening to definitely buy a ticket and support this movie because the more people that support this, it shows Hollywood that we do want 2D animated things like this and hopefully even more for Looney Tunes. Yeah, absolutely.
So the other thing that dropped last week was the Daffy and Wacky Land. This is directed by Max Winston, and it is the first of its kind, the first ever stop motion animation short for Looney Tunes. I cannot believe it. Again, like the first ever in 94 years, we're finally getting these things and it's taken forever, but it looks gorgeous. And you can watch the entire thing on Max. And I I know like some people have uploaded clips of it on YouTube, but I highly recommend going to Max and watching it there. Um, Did you get a chance to watch the short? And what was your takeaway from that? Uh, I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm a huge fan of Max Winston just in general. I've always been, I've for a long time been following, you know, any sort of project that he's done. He did like these shorts called Mr. Whoop Man. You know, and they always, uh, I, that's the thing that I liked about him so much is they are uh, stop motion shorts, but they have the sort of uh, squash and stretch and exaggeration that you expect to see in hand-drawn animation. So I think it was just a brilliant idea to to get him along to do this cartoon you know, that's uh, has this sort of Looney Tunes energy, but uh, it still uh, uses the fact that it's a stop motion film. Um, oh, 1000%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I love the fact that, you know, it starts with Daffy, like really dying of hunger. And then as soon as he sees food, like his energy just raises to a thousand and like yeah. he's just <laughs> going after the dodo bird. And again, like kudos to the team on this. I mean, I, Max Winston, I'm pretty sure, did the whole thing himself, at, you know, alongside Eric Bowser, who did the voice of yeah. Dodo and Daffy. But like this thing is mind blowing. I highly recommend checking it out. And soon the director will be on to discuss it himself. And I cannot wait to sit down with him to do that. That seems to be a thing with cartoon characters. Uh, you know, they'll they'll be dying of hunger, like Wiley e. Coyote or something, at the beginning of the cartoon. And then once the Roadrunner goes by, suddenly they have <laughs> enough energy to operate all this, uh, you know, machinery. So you know, that hunger is only sort of a temporary thing for for them. I think. Yes, <laughs> thankfully so. Otherwise, we, what would we do without these characters yeah. if they died of hunger? <laughs> yeah.
cooking, what's up, Doc? What's cooking, what's up, Doc? Oh, you're looking for bugs, bunny bunting. Duck is gonna hunting just to get a rabbit skin, but now the rabbit's gonna get. What's up, Doc? What's cooking? Hey, look out! Stop! You're gonna hurt someone with that old shotgun. Hey, what's up, Doc? We really mean it. We'll find him. The hell you will. He's got a two-day head start on you, which is more than he needs. Brody's got friends in every town and village from here to the Sudan. He speaks a dozen languages, knows every local custom. He'll blend in, disappear. You'll never see him again. With any luck, he's got the grail already. Well, does anyone here speak English? Is your brain on the box? Ah! This is my brain on the box. Does anybody else feel like a fried egg? I'll have a bit more, thank you.
not again. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. What do you think you're doing here? This is a closed set. Piss on you. I'm working for Mel Brooks. Not in the face.
Beep, Beep is one of my favorite cartoons of all time, and it is truly the idea of efficiency. It's not about humor, it's about the incredible efficiency, the perfect cinematic IQ, with very precise ideas and a way of delivering things that is superbly cinematic, that I absolutely adore. It was like a hand grenade that I put in my brain. I said, I'm going full Roadrunner with part two, which makes absolutely no sense. I didn't reveal that to my crew apart from Joe Walker, but that was one of the main influences. For me, the way I wrote and approached mise-en-scene was just to change my way of doing things, evolve and break something inside myself. And for that, Chuck Jones was the way to do it. Denis Villeneuve I always said that Chuck Jones and Buster Keaton taught me how to make Mad Max because they were pure filmmakers, and they understood the pure syntax of filmmaking. George Miller <laughs> Having trouble with a living? You tired of having your homes played by a living? You want to get rid of them pesky living critters once and for all? Well, come on down and see me, folks, because I'm the afternoon's leading bio exorcist. Yes, sir. Come on down here, and I want to tell you, I'll do anything. Tim Burton grew up in Burbank, and he was a huge fan of Warner Animation, so much so that he he made his career out of working with them. I mean, you have... Kiwi's Big Adventure, you have Batman, you have Beetlejuice, all of these are with Warner Brothers, and the most Looney Tunes of them all is Mars Attacks. When I'm calling you. Richie, I think these guys are very sick. What's happening to them? What's killing them? I think it must be my music. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, Vincent, what is your, like, absolute favorite Looney Tune-esque moment of a Tim Burton movie and is it the stop motion animation in Pee-wee's Big Adventure with Large Marge? <laughs> that, yeah, that's one that I always <laughs> come Sorry back to. to lead the witness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's that's definitely uh, one of my favorites. I also like um, uh, in, in Beetlejuice, uh, there's a bit where um, he grows like these Hand, uh, mallets for for hands, and he like sends uh, the the two people up like a high striker at the carnival or something like that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Attention, game board shoppers. Well, I'm back. I feel real good about myself, you know what I mean? So, well, not further delay. Welcome to Winter River Museum of Natural Green, a monument to the board business. Man, come on a little closer. Step right up, test your strength. <laughs> Uh, Great yeah, example. Yeah, I love Tim Burton. Um, I actually several years back got to go to the uh, the MoMA exhibit they did uh, for uh, Tim Burton's work uh, that had a lot of his uh, drawings um, and uh, some of the props and from his movies and some of the little stop motion uh, puppets from you know the Corpse Bride and things like that. Just incredible to see his his uh, personal work. Um, yeah, and MoMA, that, for those that don't know, that's the Museum of Modern Art, and they do these uh, really great art installations once every year, or they used to. I I, I haven't been keeping track with, with yeah. everything that's been going on over there. Um, but yeah, that Tim Burton exhibit was so cool because but prior to that, you hadn't really seen 
anything that was hand drawn or like the inspirations behind his characters, that was where they revealed the sketches for the penguin and Catwoman. And yeah. they had models for Frank and Weenie, I'm sure. Like mm-hmm. there was so much that was, you know, in Tim Burton's head that he was able to, you know, present to sculptors and yeah. get those ideas made into these models. Like I, I cannot imagine what it's like to be in Tim Burton's head, but I love yeah. that we get little glimpses here and there. And yeah. we have a new Beetlejuice movie coming out with stop motion animation. Yeah. And I, I'm just, I'm jumping at the bit to see this thing. Yeah. I, I just, I love that there's a filmmaker out there that is using that inspiration for the good and creating wackiness. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Yeah, I was really excited to see. I mean, there's lots of movies now that are sort of these legacy sequels to, um, you know, older movies, Um, you know, at at times that that gets a little bit tiring. But uh, seeing this was was exciting because they didn't just bring back the characters. You saw uh, a lot of those practical effects in the trailer that they had, you know, they had puppets, they had stop motion, like you said, they even had um, a, a moment where Beetlejuice's eyes popped out, but it wasn't like CGI. They just put little <laughs> ping pong balls on the eyes or something like that. So yeah, if, if it's going to be full of, uh, you know, the old school kind of practical effects and stop motion and things, then yeah, I'm, I'm right there. <laughs> yeah, same. And also the sandworms. Like, I mean, you look yeah. at Dune and those sandworms are like gigantic and CGI yeah. and a, a amazing thing to look at but the sandworms from beetlejuice are more tactile they're more you know handmade and modeled and you feel like there's a human touch behind it and i I love the fact that we're getting that again yeah i mean as much as i love i mean what they can do with with special effects with computer animation today is incredible but um you know yeah yeah you lose that sort of that art sometimes of the uh you know it's the, the old school kind of like the king kong stop motion or the Ray Harryhausen kind of stuff, you know, that has that that sort of quirky personal quality to it that makes it really fun to watch. Uh, so I'm I'm always happy if that gets you know brought back in anything. Yeah, totally. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about it. Yeah. You know how people say, you're okay in my book, or in my book, that's no good. Well, I actually have a book. And everybody I ever meet goes in this book. And now I've met you, and you're going in the book.
Get out! Is it something I said? You've ruined my life! You've ruined my career! You've ruined my book! You've turned a perfectly peaceful house into an insane asylum! Get out! Why'd you need to kick Bob out of the house? You think he's gone? He's not gone! That's the whole point! He's never gone! Is this some radical new therapy? You see? 